In this video, we are going to be covering Camworks nesting, um, as well as how to program a CNC router. Um, so we've opened this kitchen assembly up in SolidWorks, um, and you'll see all of the different um, aspects to the, pr to the uh, assembly on the left-hand side here. So if we go into our configurations, um, the parts that I want to nest are just these wooden panels here. So I actually have a configuration created for um, just the wooden panels, so um, all the details removed. We don't have any handles, um, the countertop's gone, that kind of thing. So. Um, we can actually work with this um, and then just nest this assembly file. So to add nesting in, um, we just come into add in. It's the same place we turn Camworks on. And we're just going to go to Camworks nesting and turn that on. So um, it's just another add in. And you'll see in the, the uh, command manager, we now have Camworks nesting up here. Okay, so um, we can nest two different ways. So the first one is by creating the nest job of just the assembly file. So it's going to take the um, assembly on the screen or we can nest by folder. And nesting by folder is if you had all of your parts just located in one folder. Um, we can actually nest that way as well and it'll grab every part that's in that folder. Um, so right now we're just going to use this create nest job. And what it's going to do is it's going to go through this whole assembly file and it's going to bring it into um, another assembly where everything is flattened out. So um, this is more so if you had um, sheet metal parts. So if they needed to be unfolded, it would actually unfold them here for you. Um, we Everything that I have right now is um, unfolded because it's all just flat panels. So um, this shouldn't take too long. Um, but this is basically where it comes in and tries to unfold everything. But um, we'll just press cancel because it's all it's all flat. Um, so then it's going to open up the main nesting window. Um, and the main nesting window has two different tabs that we're going to be working with. So the part data tab and then our sheet data tab. Um, the last one is multi-head option. So we can also do multi-head. Um, and that's where you would do that. But today we're just going to cover the part and sheet data. So under part data, um, it lists all of the different parts. So we've got the assembly at the top here, um, which will show basically how many um, of that assembly that I want to do. So if I have two, it'll actually double all the parts inside of it. Um, and then if I click on each different part, it actually shows a little preview of the part. It says how many it's actually using within this um, assembly file, so it won't actually list that part four times. It just gives you the quantity of four. Um, and then the thickness, as well as the material. So um, I didn't actually set the material up as um, the wooden part, so right now it's just listed as steel, but you can actually set that up in SolidWorks, and it'll list um, the part as, as the appropriate material. And then you can actually give it a grain direction as well, so you can actually have it rotate um, with that grain. Um, we also have, you can choose the normals, so you can actually choose which side you want facing up um, if you have a, a specific side that you need to be cut out. Um, most of these are just through holes um, with a, a part perimeter cut that needs to be done, so um, these are pretty straightforward. Um, we also have the rotation angles that you can add in here, and you'll see the, they're also listed here um, under each part. So the rotation angle, we can actually set up um, one angle that it, it can rotate by. So this one's right now set to 90 degrees. Um, or we can have multiple angles. So it'll actually just choose the best angle that it, that it um, can rotate it and fit it on the sheet um, appropriately. So if we put one degree in here, then it'll, it'll use every angle. Um, but we're just going to use the 90 degrees um, because all of these parts are rectangular. So that um, would make the most sense for these parts. And then we've got under um, the part data section, we have this nesting data, which actually doesn't change in both tabs. Um, so this is um, going to give you the part to part distance as well as your part to sheet distances. So if I just want, you know, um, quarter inch or maybe half an inch. These are pretty big parts, so we're just going to use half inch for both of these. Um, and then we've got um, some location options. So your output assembly, where that's going to be located. 
um, the assembly template. So we actually have um, our SolidWorks templates that this is going to use. Um, and you can choose different templates there. Um, and then we also have um, the option to save our output as a DXF file. So if your machine, if your writer takes DXF files, um, we can actually save each sheet out as a, a DXF and then you would um, insert that into your machine to machine those out. We have two different nesting types. Um, we have fast nesting and optimal nesting. So fast nesting is basically going to um, take all of the parts and nest them as fast as it possibly can. And optimal nesting, you can actually give it a time constraint um, to basically give you the best um, or the most optimal nest job that it can within that time. Um, so I'm just going to use fast nesting for this example and it also does a really good job. Um, so you do have the, the options, um, the two options. You can also create a separate assembly file by checking this box and it'll actually create a separate assembly for each um, nested um, sheet. Um, right now, we, when we do nest this, it's actually going to put each sheet in a different configuration. So um, that's all going to be in one nested file or one nested assembly file. So the second tab that I was talking about is the sheet data. So this is basically um, all of the different size sheets that you're going to use to nest these. Um, so the first one is going to be the first thickness that we had um, for the part files that we are using. Um, so it's just going to list them um, based on thicknesses and based on materials. Um, so we need to put a different sheet size in for each one or the same sheet size, whatever you're, you're using there. Um, so we have a list of all the different standard sizes. Um, so there's quite a few different standard sizes in here. Um, so we can use any of these and it'll um, actually insert that into um, our sheet list here. So if I just press add sheet, there's my first sheet there. So that's a standard size. Um, if we wanted a custom size, we can actually type that in, then add the sheet there. Um, we also have the option for sheet DXF. So if you want to save out a DXF file, maybe you've um, already machined a certain amount of parts and you just want to use the leftover um, sheet that um, that we've also used in the past, we can actually save that as a DXF and in insert it here. But I'm just going to use the standard sizes right now. So I'm just going to keep adding these in until I've got all the different thicknesses. And this message window actually lets me know that I don't have any... Um, parts that are missed. So we've got all the different thicknesses and right now I've only got one material listed but if there were multiple materials it would have um, per thickness and per th material. Um, and again the nesting data in the bottom is the same so um, we're ready to nest so we can just press OK. And it's going to go through and it actually kind of shows you the, the uh, sheets being created. So the sheet is actually um, a sketch that they've created. Um, so there's actually going to be a sketch for uh, each sheet size, which is great for CamWorks because it's, it's uh, going to allow us to use that as the stock material. It's also going to open up a window that shows us... Um, this window right here, so CW nesting, it says, do you want to proceed to add your nested parts to the CamWorks part manager automatically? So that's a really nice feature because it's actually going to add that, add all of our parts into the part manager so we don't have to do that because it knows that we're automatically going to be programming this assembly file um, within CamWorks. Um, so it kind of combines the nesting with uh, your CamWorks software. So then it's going to go through and um, what it's doing is it's actually creating a summary of all the different nested parts um, so that we can see which parts were nested, which ones weren't, um, and why. Um, so if maybe some sh parts didn't fit on a sheet, then we would actually see that that part wasn't nested in this uh, results summary. Um, the more parts uh, that you're nesting, the longer it's obviously going to take because it has to um, fit those on in the right orientation, but uh, this is the nest result summary, so we're going to press OK here. Um, and you can see that all the different parts are listed, and then it actually says the nested quantity and the total quantity. So if um, 
you had maybe two here, then it means that two of those parts couldn't fit on a sheet. Um, so it shows all of the different parts that are nested and then the instances of those parts. And then it gives you each sheet. So these are all the different sheets and the sizes that we used. And then these are um, the actual utilization amounts for each sheet. So there were six parts fit onto this first sheet um, and 77% of that sheet was uh, utilized. And then it gives you the amount of sheets that, that are listed here and the overall uh, utilization of all of those sheets together. So it's a nice little summary and you can access that um, just in your nesting tab here. So if I come into CamWorks, um, and I'm just going to scroll up to the top of this window. So basically this is a configuration. My first uh, configuration is my first sheet. Um, so if I come into my configurations, and this is the SolidWorks configurations, I can kind of flip through them and actually see all the different nested sheets here. Um, so if I come back to the first one, um, we can come into our CamWorks tab and you'll see again that all of these um, parts have been listed in the part manager already because we um, opted to do so. And then what we need to do is set up the stock first. So if I edit the definition of that stock, it already knows that I want to use that sketch, that outline sketch for our sheet. Um, but I just need to make sure that it's the right thickness. So I'm just going to click on the vertex of this um, this first part here in the corner. So I'll just click on that vertex. And now you'll see that my stock is the same thickness as um, the part files. Okay, so we'll press OK there. Um, and now we've got our stock set up. And I'm just going to make sure in my CamWorks options under my milling features. And again, this is all under milling because um, the router... Um, will use actual mill features to cut their parts out. So I'm going to make sure that my part perimeter option is selected under boss type. And then we've also got holes, non-holes, bosses, um, and that kind of thing. So I would just want to make sure that all of these uh, features will be cut out. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is to extract the machinable features. So I'm going to go through all of these parts and make sure that it finds all of the different machinable features that um, I want to cut. So we've got our part perimeter features, the hole, um, all three of the holes, and then we've got the pocket in the middle there. Uh, there's some little notches on the sides here, which can be... Uh, found in our part perimeter, so I could actually probably remove those. So I'll just delete this feature here. And then we've got some more part perimeters, a couple more notches that'll probably be pointless, and then... So now we've got all our part perimeters, and then the features on this, this um, the interior of this part here. Okay, so um, now that we've found all of the machinable features in this part, so they're all listed in our um, assembly file here, we can generate the operation plans for all of these. So it's basically, um, and I'll go back to my feature tree to show you that, it's taking each um, part and applying the, the tool path that we've associated with it. So we've got the part perimeter, which is going to apply a contour tool path to that. If I come back to my operation tree, um, you can now see that all of my tool paths are listed here, and we just want to generate the tool paths now. So we've got a contour tool path, um, a center drill, and some drills, and then it's going to cut out the rest of the parts there. Um, and at this point, we can sort our tool paths, so sort operations, go to our sort tab, and then I want to do maybe um, my rough mills first, my contour mills, and then I'll do my drilling afterwards. And if I had a face mill, it would come first. Um, and then I can sort by tool as well. Or I could do tool and then by operation type. So I'm going to apply that and press OK. And now you'll see that I've got all of my contours, um, the rough mill I want at the top here, the contours, and then the drilling. Um, in this scenario, probably with the router, I'd want to do my, uh, my per perimeter cuts last. Um, so I can actually just grab all of my drilling and move them up to the top. Got my rough mill, and then I want to make sure that that in interior contour is um, afterwards as well. So um, now I've got all my part perimeter tool paths coming afterwards.
Um, so that's kind of the basics of how you would um, nest something and then program it. Um, so I could, if I want to go to my next sheet, come back into my configurations. And once I double click on that next configuration and come back into Camworks, it actually lets me know that this is a new configuration. Um, so if I want to copy uh, the configuration, the actual machining configuration um, that I've set from my last one, I could do that. Or I could add in a new machining configuration in uh, Camworks for the next one. And then I would just start over and actually um, set up this one as well. So um, that is definitely an option. And then I would have all my different configurations set up in here for each sheet. So um, I can set those up as well. So um, that's the, the basics of how you would use nesting inside of Camworks and then actually program uh, the Camworks part afterwards. Um, and then again, your machine settings are all going to be the same uh, settings as um, a milling machine would be. So if I come into my uh, machine settings here, under mill machines, I would just have my routers listed under here as well. So um, the router um, will basically take the place of the milling machine um, with all the same types of tool paths. It would just have the different post processor. So we would set up a different post processor for um, your router. Um, the tool crib would also list all the different tools that you have inside of your, um, uh, what you use for your machine, or maybe you have a tool crib set up for your whole shop or whatever you need there, but these would all be the different tools um, that you've got inside or that you use with the router. Um, and you can add different tool cribs, um, so you can have as many tool cribs as you want as well. Well, thank you for watching.